take one and a half. Everybody subsequent to the Isle of Wight Festival and uh, prior to it has been talking about the new, subdued, mature Jimi Hendrix. And I wonder if you could tell us why this is and, and maybe where it started from. Well, there was a period when I stopped talking so much <laughs> because, like, you know, just going through certain things here and there. And, like, um, oh, I don't know, really. They just, I guess there was something else to talk about or something, whatever. It, seem, was, it does seem... Because, like, I just got very quiet for a while. I just, I just, like, you know, just did the gigs and just, like, stayed in and tried to stay away and all that, you know. That's probably one of those things. Because, like, I was changing. I felt like I was changing and get into like heavier music and was getting unbearable with the three pieces, you know. And like oh, I always wanted to expand and all this. But I think I'll go back to the three pieces again now. And get another bass player. And I'll probably be loud again. <laughs> but it does appear, doesn't it, I mean, uh, that um, <clears throat> the days of the baubles and bangles and the freaky oh. hairstyle have all disappeared. And are you not worried in a sense that maybe your quieter approach now may lose a little of the mystique that there was with Jimi Hendrix, which attracted well, people to begin with. Yeah, but see, everybody goes to those stages that, um, the first, like the first time around, and you wear all these different things, you know. Like I see some other groups, this, like uh, Mountain and Cactus or whatever, you know, like they're getting into the thing, so you see that some of the new pictures now, now their hair is getting longer. And they wear more jewelry and strangling themselves with all these, you know, beads and jewelry and stuff. But it's, I don't know, I just did that because like, I felt like I was being too loud or something. Because my nature just changes, you know. You were quoted yeah. in one paper as saying, in fact, that you never wanted to be a visual thing. Well, I don't want it to be basically this only hyped up on all the visual thing. You know, I wanted the people to like listen to. I don't know if they were or not, though. After a while, I started getting aware too much of what was going down. It was starting to bring me down a little bit, so I just started cutting my hair, and then start rings disappearing one by one. <laughs> Are you, in fact, saying that that kind of freak thing was really a kind of publicity hype, the Jimi Hendrix? No, 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 I have, you know, like, I like, all they do is let me do what I want to do, my own kind of scenes. Uh, like, one time I said, maybe I should burn a guitar tonight, I really feel, um, you know. <laughs> Or maybe I should smash a guitar or something like that. And he says, yeah, yeah. I said, you really think I should? I said, yeah, that'd be cool. So OK. So like, if I just work up enough anger as to where I could do it, you know. But like, I didn't, you know, I didn't think too much of the hype scene and all that, because like, I dug you know, wearing all those different things. You know. It was fun. And I still do, but I, you know, like, I don't see very many other people doing it. So like, it, has, it gives me a dumb or a stupid tendency to like, hold back from my own desires and so forth. For some unknown reason, I don't know. So the anger maybe is dispersed a little? Oh, yeah, that's always happening, though. But, like, I didn't know it was anger until they told me that it was. You know, like with destruction and all that. But I believe everybody should have, like, a, a room where they can get rid of all their, you know, all their um, releases, where they can do the releases there. So my room was a stage. <laughs> no. no. What is going to happen now? I mean, you apparently from the Isle of Wight Festival, you were quoted as saying prior to the Isle of Wight that if it really happened big for you, you'd carry on for a while. Were you satisfied with the results of the Isle of Wight? Well, it was so mixed up there. And at time, it so confused that, like, uh, I didn't get a chance to really base any of my future on that one gig, you know, except when I played God Bless the Queen. <laughs> if you know what I mean. But like, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't base my whole thing on you know, what I'm going to do after that, you know, by just that one job there. I was probably happy just to play there, you know. And I was wondering if we was going to be recept, you know, if they was going to dig us, then quite naturally I'd go on and try to get it together. Now, Billy Cox has split. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to, uh, whatever happens, you've got to find a new bass player, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, that's that damn maid. Wait a minute. So, do you intend to form another small unit, or are you hoping to get something bigger together for 
I really don't know. I think I'll get another small one together, I guess. It's really hard to decide, you know. I'd like to have both if I could. Like use one for touring, and then sometimes I could do another tour with a big one, you know, whatever. Now again, you were quoted in one paper uh, as saying that you wanted to do less personal appearances. Yeah, right. And then I think it would count more if we did less, you know, personal appearances. We're trying to get a tour of England together now, but like, that's definitely going to call for another bass player, you know. And, uh, Do you personally feel that the excitement has gone out of things? I mean, no, I was feeling like that before because I was thinking too fast, you know. It seems like, you know, a person has a tendency to get bored because, like, he always wants to try to do all these accomplishments, you know. Like starting an idea, something like that, and never quite finishing it out, you know. But some people should just be, you know, to start ideas and other ones should carry them out. Yeah. But, like, um, I don't know. It's really hard to say right now. It's whatever, it's whatever happens. I, I can feel like um, we could do tours with a small group again, you know, one another bass player. I'd probably get very wild though and wrapped up in the other scene again, you know, like with the hair and so forth, or the visuals probably. But it's all depend, you know, it's, it's really hard to know what people want around here sometimes. All I'm gonna do is just gonna do what I feel, but like right now I don't, I can't feel anything right now because like, there's a few things that just happen, you know. And so, like, I just have to, like, lay back and think about it all. Do you feel any kind of compulsion to prove yourself as King Guitar, which is the kind uh, of label that people have slapped on you? I don't know. Well, I was just playing loud. That's, that's the only difference. <laughs> no, I don't try to fight that. I mean, I don't try to really let that bother me. Because they say a lot of things about people that if they let it bother them, they wouldn't even be around today, you know. King guitar and all that, wow, that's a bit heavy. <laughs> Who are the people that, um, I mean, you ha you've you already expressed uh, appreciation in one paper of Pink Floyd. What are the, the things that you admire about Pink Floyd and the things they're doing? Oh yeah, well they're doing like a different type of music. They're doing more of like a s space type of thing. I mean, inner space, it seems like, you know. And like, uh, you know, technically, you know, they're getting electronics and all this. Right. Yeah, they do like a space type of thing, like an inner space type of thing, and uh, you know, sometimes you have to lay back by yourself and appreciate them, you know. That's the type of music they're into, it's, it's good. But like, I think I'd want to make mine a little more easier, with a better, you know, with, like with a solid beat, probably. Mm -hmm. More beat. You seem torn between the idea of getting together a big band mm -hmm. uh, in which you can step back and a yeah. smaller unit, a kind of rock and roll thing, mm -hmm. where you can uh, project your own musical mm -hmm. thing. Uh, is that a real problem for you? I don't know. I think this thinking about the rock and roll thing so much is, well, everybody goes through that. It's the idea of thinking they might lose friends, so they might want to get back, you know, together. It's something similar to that, only with probably even a better beat and, uh, you know, more music. Would it be, I mean, is it, like a, would it be practical for you to get together and maybe an organist and a vocalist so that you yeah, can step back as a guitarist? Well, that's exactly what I want to do, actually. That's what I have to do. All I do is go, like, probably get a two guitars, kind of myself, an organist and a singer, you know, and drums quite naturally and bass. Mm -hmm. If I can get something like that, that would be on the side. I remember talking to uh, Alvin Lee of Ten Years After some weeks ago, and he said of you, in fact, that you'd never really been truly appreciated or um, analyzed as a songwriter. Mm. Uh, do you feel that, that maybe your image got in the way of that to an extent? Mm. I mean, do you feel that that lack, that you've never really been truly uh, criticized as a songwriter? Well, probably it was a good thing because I'm still trying to get that together. You know, all I'm writing is just what I feel, that's all and not really using too many good, uh, you know, I don't really round it off too good, you know, I just keep it almost naked almost, you know. <laughs> and like, um, probably, you know, the words were so bland, blank and everything that they probably didn't want to get into that. And like when we go to play, you know, you're flipping around and flashing around and everything, and then they're not going to see nothing but what their eyes see, you know, forget about their ears. So like, while well, I was trying to do too many things at the same time, which is my nature, you know, but I was enjoying it, and I still do enjoy it. If I, ever, I mean, by just thinking about it, you know. But, but there again, I mean, you're. I, I just hate to be in one corner. I hate to be 
put as only a guitar player, or either only as a songwriter, or only as a tap dancer, or something like this. <laughs> you know? I like to move, or, you know, I like to move around. Is it important for you to achieve recognition as a songwriter? I don't know, really. I guess it would be if I wanted to just lay back and predominantly write songs when I can't go on stage anymore. You, you were quoted in one paper as saying that you wanted, you didn't really care what you did as long as you turned people on. Yeah. Right? Now, what do you want to turn people on to apart from your music? Is there any moral or political intent in the kind of things you want to write? Oh, no, I like for them to get easier in the mind a little bit because there's too many heavy songs out nowadays. Music is getting, you know, or at least it has been getting too heavy, like, you know, almost to the state of unbearable, you know. I have this one little saying, when things get too heavy, just call me helium, the lightest known gas to man. <laughs> but then again. So where are your, um, your inspirations for songs coming at the present time, and where are you turning to for your directions um, as a writer? For my, for my this recent experiences, <laughs> uh, what I try to do is like look at the totality of that and give them the other half. You know, first of all, you have the the one half, and then the second half, the um, you know the uh, uh, solution or whatever it might be, which is the second. First of all, you have the experience, and then you have the use of it all. You know. And like, I was just trying to go through a lot of changes and I could write the nice parts about him, you know? But right now, it's taken a while. <laughs> Do you feel at all concerned that, uh, I mean, you, you, you have been quoted as saying in the past that music will, the next... Uh, Should be classic. No, the, 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 the next... Uh, wheel, as it were, the next circle mm. of music, but we're now at an end of something, and the next uh, stage of music, popular music, will change the world. And do you really believe that, or do you believe that music is a reflection of the world? Yeah, well, it's always a reflection. But, like, if they see, then, well, the reflection of the world is like blues. That's where the music, that's where that part of the music is at. But then you got this other kind of music that's trying to come around. It's not sunshine music necessarily, it's, you know, but it's like a more easier type of thing with less words, you know, and more meaning to it, you know. And you don't have to be singing about love all the time in order to uh, give love to the people, you know. You don't have to keep flashing those words love all the time. But I don't know, I maybe mean, I was just feeling all nice and enthusiastic when I said that. <laughs> right now, I can't take back on that because it's a nice thought. I think it, there's no reason why I couldn't. It was organized like a do you want to do that personally, though? I mean, do you, oh, do you like want to, to change the it. world? Well, I like to take part in it, changing reality, probably. Not what the way I know it, necessarily, but the way that it would get along a little better, as if we're old and young, don't clash so much together. What are the things that you would like to see changed? Oh, I don't know. More color in the streets, probably. I mean, you know... <laughs> and, uh, I really don't know. Whatever happens, it should have a chance to be like brought into the open. If there's a new idea or a new invention or a new gas or a new whatever, you know, or a new idea of thinking, it should be brought at least into the open, you know, and be respected as, as being new and probably, a, you know, a decent change or a help for the, you know, like the human race or whatever. Instead of keep carrying these same old burdens around with you. And you have to be a freak in order to be different, you know. And even freaks, they're very prejudiced. You have to have your hair long and talk in a certain way in order to be with them, you know. In order to be with the other people, you have to have your hair short and wear ties. So we're trying to make the third world happen, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it does seem that people like Sebastian, for example, want to try and change the world, doesn't it? That, yeah. that their intention is to make the world a better place. Oh, yeah. Do you feel that same kind of need? Yeah. But all that has to come with, from within side, though, you know, I guess. I guess a person would have to change himself in order to be a living example of what he's singing about or something, you know. In order to change the world, then, like, I guess he'd have to really get his head together first before he can say anything to the world to change it, you know. I think certain people think of your music essentially as, as uh, angry music, as no, raging against perhaps the uh, establishment principles that, that... Oh, it's not raging against it. This is the, if it was up to me, it wouldn't be able to sustain the establishment, you know. 
So I guess we'll see. It's a little bit blues. That's what I'm thinking about. Do you have today's blues? Do you have any politics, in fact, yourself? Not really. I was getting ready to get into all that, but like, I mean, you know, but everybody goes to that stage is too. Yeah. I'm just, you know, it, it all comes out in the music most of the time. We have this one song called Straight Ahead, and it just says like, power to the people, freedom of the soul, pass it on to the young and old, and we don't give a damn if you're here, it's short or long, communication's coming on strong, and all this kind of stuff, you know. Have you had any problems with the Black Panther movement in the States? Any problems? No, it's just the idea of, uh, you know, there's a lot of political, you know, things happening out there that I'd really have to get away from because then I'd find myself in too much of a box situation, you know. I like mean, I say, I'd, I'd rather, you know, if I had anything to say, I'd have to say it to everybody instead of just the one little thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the little thing, but Have one they ever demanded of you that you play a concert for the Panthers? Well, actually, they asked us, which I was really, you know, I was happy for them to ask us. I was honored and all this, you know. But we never did do it yet. We haven't done it yet. Uh, Mike Jeffries, he's taking care of that side of it. So I don't know if we'll ever... When you look back on things like Hey Joe now, I mean, uh, how do you feel about those musically? Oh, I think they're... All right, I guess. You know, I don't have nothing to regret at all in the past, except that I might have unintentionally might have heard somebody else or something. And plus the music, I think they're all nuts. You know. I don't look at him down, that's for sure. I just look at him as changes. I mean, it has been said of you that you invented psychedelic music. <laughs> and that... <laughs> A mad scientist approach. What do, you, what do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel that's, that's fair? I mean, was your music written originally, or your Intended early for music psychedelic type written for psychedelic I really don't. I have to tell purposes. the truth. Our experience, one time I just heard that recently, you know, and they kind of like, almost like, I don't know, it seemed like I was behind. Or something, it, you know. When I heard it, it's like a, I said, "Damn, I wonder where my head was at when I said all those things," you know. But like, a, I don't, I don't consider that no invention of psychedelic. It's just asking a lot of questions. And but I mean, things like Purple Haze, for example, did tend to have a a, a rather psychedelic, oh, yeah, dreamlike quality about yeah, them, didn't they? But it said, it just said with a heartbeat, what was happening, you know. It says, "Damn, wait a minute, I feel, you know." Excuse me while I do this, you know, for a second. <laughs> you know, you feel yourself like going in different strange areas and all this. Like most curious people do. And I just happened to put it on purple haze. It was actually a long, long thing, you know. I, was ta I told you that before, didn't I? Yeah. You don't think of yourself as a psychedelic writer? Well, I, I think maybe it's more that than anything else. I'm trying to get more so into other things, you know. But the way I write things, I just write them in with a clash between reality and fantasy, mostly. You have to use fantasy in order to uh, show different sides of reality. That's how it can bend. As the word reality is nothing but each individual's own way of thinking. And then the establishment grabs a big piece of that, you know, and the Church of England and so forth on down the line. How much is the still... Sorry, go ahead. No, good. I was going to say, how much is that that's uh, still in the can from the uh, I mean, real Jimi Hendrix experience that was, or Billy Cox and Mitch Mitchell, I mean... Of psychedelics, you mean? Yeah, of, of um, albums and tracks to come. I mean, what's going to happen next on, uh, as an album from you? Well, you know? I think we're going to have this thing called Horizon. <sighs> Between here and Horizon, or something pertaining to that, you know. And like, um, that goes into certain things like Room Full of Mirrors. That's more of a, a mental disarrangement that a person might be thinking, this says something about broken glass, it used to be all in my brain, and so forth. And uh, then we had other ones called, um, well, I told you about that. Oh, then we have this other one called Astro Man. It says something about talking about living in peace of mind. Well, Astro Man will leave you in pieces, and so forth and so on. And, um, and the valleys of Neptune are rising. But all these, it's like, I don't even know what that word means, really. It's, what is it? It's like, uh, what, you say one thing and mean another, you mean? Something like that. Or you can get about three different meanings out of one thing, you mean? Is that what that's at? Well, I think psychedelic to most people has uh, connotations mm. with LSD. Oh, so you mean strictly LSD? You mean with that type of consciousness? Yeah, with dream. Oh, uh, oh right. Oh, yeah, well, you have to give them a little bit of the dream on, because so they can hear it over again, because they might be in a different mood. Well, dreams come from different moods, you know. So it's nothing but m moody.
Moody, you know. <laughs> you, one of the other things that you've said quite recently is that uh, your music, your next music, w might be or would be influenced by people like uh, yeah, and Wagner yeah. and oh, yeah, Strauss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, I think the way things are going right now, materially, that's going to take time. But like spiritually and you know, and in the head and all this, it's always there and it gets better and better all the time. One of these days I just finally released all that out, you know. But like uh, the way things have been going lately, I think it's gonna it's gonna take a little more time. We have this one little bolero type of thing. It's kinda nice, but then it breaks down into a very simple pattern of, you know, asking this one question like where are you coming from or where are you going to? And but like and this little girl answers, you know. But like it's not really into the really big mass movement music that I want to do, you know. Do you want to get involved in symphonies and sort of symphony oh, yeah. orchestras and that kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, I really, you know, I, but I have to get involved in my own kind of way because I always want to respect my own judgments and different things, you know. So therefore I have to respect my, my own timing of getting those. When I finally do get into it, the whole world's going to know about it. I mean, that's really... Um, Along the lines of max, uh, along the lines of mixed media. Yeah, it? right. Now, that's it. Well, that's more universal than this pertains to this one little thing, yeah. isn't it? Or but, is the, but the drawback people have, have, uh, have said about mixed media is that uh, the people who you're mixing your medias with <laughs> tend not to be able to relate to you. I mean, uh, As although you go me? halfway to them with your music, they won't go halfway to you. And it's the classical well, musicians. Wicked. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I, I don't plan to make it that stiff. I planned, with, if I had the proper timing, that it would be, it would be just like what every, what every step is, the, the uh, you know, m mixture of the past and the future, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's the way all music is anyway, I mean, but I mean, technically. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. I don't plan this to go out there with a 90-piece orchestra and play you know, two and a half hours of classical music. I don't plan that at all. I plan for both those things to be used, rock and class, classic. Without, without even knowing that it's rock and classic, with it being a whole other thing. Then. You've talked quite a bit about um, audio-visual importance, too, about the, uh, the importance of having a film with your music. Now, are you thinking in terms of the days when we can fit a cassette into the yeah. side of our television and play music and a film together? Or, yeah. or I mean, plus, I'm thinking about days when finally people will be able to. A lot of people are making more money than they ever have nowadays. So that when they get their flat, they can. Oh, they always find themselves open with an extra room. So like this whole room can be like a total audiovisual environment type of thing. They can go in there and you just lay back. And the whole thing just blossoms out with this color and sound type of scene, you know. Well, it's like a destruction room where you go in, or it's just like a tea room where you go and have tea. You can go in here and just like jingle like your nerves or something, you know. And like, well, that's, that goes with the cassette. Yeah, it goes in with the cassette, you know. You put in your favorite star and all of a sudden this music and the audio, I mean, the visual scene comes on. And plus on stage, if we ever did any more stage things with this new band, you know what I mean, with this new thing, it would have to, it would definitely have to be, uh, you know, audio-visual. And then plus, it would probably only be about 5,000 people at performance. Because we'd like to get this geodesic dome and, like, have the whole thing just lay it out perfectly. It would probably take a week, you know, when you come in town, like on a train or something. It'll be traveled by train, and then you take about a, a day or two, or about three days to set the whole thing up. And then you get performance in the next three days or something of just a handful of people coming in, you know. And I think that'll be done, like, because then you can work, then everybody get more effect from it, you know, instead of putting a big block screen behind you. Now, what about the subject of festivals now? Do you think the Isle of Wight is, as some people have said, the last of the big festivals? I don't know why they're always trying to kill the festivals, really. I mean, unless they're going to keep putting them on like they always are. The Isle of Wight was great, you know, people milling about, digging each other, especially with it being the Isle of Wight, with all, so many mixtures of different countries, you know. And the only static you're going to get from festivals is from the, uh, not from the people themselves, but from the other people that can't understand the idea of mixing so many different people together, you know, under the name of music, peace, and love. And so, like, because this is completely different than the World War II setup, you know? And in and, and the World War II, all these countries were completely against each other almost, completely opposite. Now we're getting them all together through the idea of music, you know? 
But it does appear, doesn't it, that a very militant faction is now a politically motivated no. faction has got involved in these festivals, well, like the French Maoists. With any, with, any new, with any new civilization you try to, you know, that you might find yourself involved in or you might see growing, with any new civilization they have to have their own officers and beliefs and governments and all that. So it's not all that political. Not really. You know, you just take the best from all, you know, from all politics or all religions or all countries. You just do the best with that, and then you. In the meantime, we're just forced to be gathered in pastures right now, you know. Yeah. But I mean, these people that turned up uh, at the Isle of Wight festival and demanded that uh, the music be free and that the festival. Oh be yeah, free. well they learned that from the papers. Mm -hmm. They learned all that from the papers. They don't. How come they don't do that with Monterey? They didn't do all that kind of mess with Monterey. See, festivals shouldn't uh, worry about getting so many people. It's a big ego trip now. 500,000 people came. Oh, wow, that's great. Well, with, with the 500,000, that's way larger than the average city, for instance, in England. And every city in, in the world always has a gang, a street gang, or the so-called the outcast, you know. So you're going to get that with 500,000 people. That's a city right there, you know. So you're going to have to have gate crashes. You know, you're going to have the other side of everything. Well, it's up to the people. If they really want to keep it going, they'll keep it going. If they don't, then they'll appreciate the music itself. But see, you can't mill about when you're at a rock and roll theater, you know? Remember when you used to have gigs in the theater? You can't really mingle too much. You know, you just have to sit there and just have the But don't you feel, in the sense, when the thing becomes that huge that the music has become incidental anyway, when there's 500,000 yeah, people who oh, can't definitely. see you and probably yeah. can't even hear you? Well, see, you I, know, I can understand that part. It's not only the music, but it's the music draws. I mean, well, the artists, the artists and their names and so forth draws the people there. But the whole idea is, is the people to dig themselves and so forth, you know, just mingling around, meeting different other people. That's creepy. That's why they should give more to a festival. They should have not only music, but theater and uh, you know selling things and circuses and so forth because it's too shows. yeah definitely definitely freedom in Denmark <laughs> slurp slurp now what about the prices of admission at concerts because I see that you previously expressed concern about the charges that kids were being uh, taken for to see your concerts in the States, but at the same time, most of your concerts in the States I thought were self promoted, and I would have thought that you could control the prices yourself. Not really, not really, because not the way that the people who lay it down who's ever self promoting it. Self promotion only with my name only, that's, that's all I have <laughs> to do with it mostly. Because they explain that they have to sell the tickets at a certain amount in order to make a certain cover or something, you know. But all they explain to me is, you know. Something else I don't understand, really. But, I mean, surely you could turn around and say, all right, well, if you're going to charge $6 or whatever it is to get in to see mm. Jimi Hendrix, I won't play. Yeah, I could do all that, too. But see, there's contracts now that you sign sometimes and commitments you make. And regardless of how much they charge, regardless of how much they charge, sometimes you only get a chance to look into all of that. All you can do is express your opinions about it. And I hope the next time it'll be better, you know. Like, I think that's why they're arranging a tour in England. That's why they're taking so long in doing that, is because they get the prices at least at a compromising, you know, between us and the promoters. You what know, would you so say? Hard, so hard. I mean, what would you say would be a reasonable fee for you to do a concert before, shall we say, 10,000 people, for example? How much would I get paid, or how much would the tickets cost to me? Well, how much would you consider to be a reasonable fee for you and your band if it was a three piece band? Hmm, for 10,000 people? Oh, I don't know. It's pretty hard to say that, but I, I could say how much maybe the people should pay to get in, maybe. Well, how much would they should Say about a dollar and a half, I guess. Which, in terms of English money, would mean what? A uh, dollar and a half is... About is seven it? and six? Or? Yeah, I think so. Six and six. Mm -hmm. How much do they pay around here? Yeah. How, how much do they pay about here when they go to concerts? Here? Well, I think it just depends on where you're sitting, you know. I mean, that's All right. The other thing. Well, what's the highest they ever go? Do they ever well, get to twelve? Two pounds or three pounds? Oh, well, that's silly. No, as long as they keep it under ten, I think it should, they shouldn't go any higher than ten shillings. What do you think? Because after the all, it is music, and they have to pay is twice as much or three times as much to buy the LP. What do you think about the concept of free music? I mean, free concerts. Oh, I can dig that. I can really dig that. But can you play them? We should be able to. There's no reason why we shouldn't. We should only collect enough as well we can pay the expenses from the last town to the next town. You know. Do one kind of things because we have time, you know. This, 
there's no big rush. But see, sometimes the music people, I mean, that's the other end of the business. You know, they put you into these big rush things where you don't get a chance to even reply to all that. But we can do, there's no reason why we can't do free concerts here. But like, we would, you know, we would get, we would blow a lot of money if we had to pay for everything, like the theater. If we can get enough money as a where we could like um, have the uh, people all together pay for the theater and our fare and our hotel to the, you know, between, I mean, this expenses. That's all they would have to pay. So the tickets would really drop down in price. So it would actually be free. It would be a donation, like. Do you feel personally that you've got enough money now to live comfortably without necessarily making more money as a sort of professional entertainer? Uh, I don't think so. Not the way I'd like to live. Because, like, I want to get up in the morning and just roll over my bed into an indoor swimming pool and then swim to the breakfast table, you know, come up for air and get up maybe a drink of orange juice or something like that. Then I just flop over from the chair into the swimming pool and swim into the bathroom and, you know, go and shave and whatever. You don't want to live just comfortably, you want to live luxuriously. No, is that luxurious? I was thinking about a, a tent, maybe, over, 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 overhanging a mountain stream. 